Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield here at the Duchess Theatre in the West End of London at the play that goes wrong intentionally. Uh, we've got the writer and the star of the show, Henry Lewis. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Apologies, firstly, for piling on on a two-show day. It can't be easy because this isn't sort of a phone-in type of show, is it? No, no, no. Uh, it's pretty uh, it's, it's pretty intense, pretty tiring. There's quite a lot of physical stuff in the show uh, and sort of uh, lots of uh, stunts and, and things and uh, big bits of slapstick. So, yeah, no, it's, it's quite a tiring show and uh, two-show days are pretty, pretty demanding. I don't think I've seen a show more packed with shtick than this show. I mean, it's the play that goes wrong that could have a million things go wrong unintentionally that intentionally were meant to go wrong. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I think we quite often find uh, if something really does go wrong, it's a real problem, I think. I think it's really important that we're sort of uh, uh, in control of all the things that do go wrong. I think quite often people say, oh, it's fine if something does go wrong. I'm sure you can get away with it. But actually, if something really does go wrong, it can sort of really stick out. So uh, we have to be very precise. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a play about a play which is a collaboration it's badly produced, it all goes wrong, nobody likes it, the cast end up falling out, falling over. It's really the worst thing since the X Factor musical to hit the West End, isn't it? <laughs> well, we're quite, we're quite proud of the, of the fact that the show's been a disaster. We often say that, uh, you know, originally we were just trying to do a murder mystery, but all these things went wrong, and so uh, now it's become this thing. No, but it, I mean, there's a few things in the show that are sort of uh, that are sort of based on uh, things that have, we've sort of seen go wrong in shows or that have happened to us that have gone wrong in shows. No show that we've done has been quite as disastrous as this one, though. <laughs> yeah. It's so clever. And if this were done cheaply, it wouldn't work. I mean, there's some big set pieces that have to go wrong at the right time, at the right place for you to then do your thing. But it's impressive and it takes you by surprise. Oh, cool. Well, I'm, I'm, glad, you say, I'm glad you say that. I mean, I think, um, uh, yeah, we've, we, the way we have sort of wrote it was, was designed to, uh, to keep the audience guessing and to keep it moving and to keep it fast paced. And uh, hopefully everything that happens has a sort of callback later on in the show uh, so that um, uh, you get really big payoffs in the, in the sort of, to, especially in the second act, uh, but also in the, in the first act, all the setups are sort of little mini jokes within themselves, hopefully. How difficult is it, you, especially at the end of that second act, when it just gets crazier and crazier, to keep on top of it? Because it is like a HGV going down the M1, <laughs> and then you have to put the brakes on, don't you? Um, yeah, you've got to be in control all the time, and you've got to be focused, and as you say, uh, discipline, totally. That, that's really, really important, uh, I think. And it's really important that you're able to sort of play it straight and, and have, as I say, sort of physical precision. And um, obviously, I don't want to give too much away, but you know, there's moments where you've got bits of set and stuff falling around people, and you've got to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, and so whilst having the comic timing, it's also about having the technical precision to do it so it, it can be tricky but we've had a fair bit of practice now I've been doing it for a while so hopefully we get it right Has anybody sat down and added up how many jokes there are in this both physically <laughs> and in the script? Uh, we haven't done a full uh, sort of joke <laughs> count no but I don't know it must be there must be several hundred I reckon I'm sort of maybe I don't know getting on for maybe maybe even a thousand I don't know but yeah, yeah quite a few hundred And of course there's the pre-show before the show even starts you have the audience laughing Yeah absolutely well we have a sort of half an hour pre-show uh, obviously the setup of the show is that it's uh, an amateur dramatic society putting on the show and it's their first night so obviously uh, uh, to be true to that they're obviously doing as much as they can uh, in the run up the last final half an hour to the show to get everything ready and make sure all the set is finished and the set is still being uh, hammered together in that uh, 30 minutes and uh, again not wanting to give too much away but there's a little bit of audience participation in that section and uh, a few fun things uh, which we find really helpful really sort of warms everyone up so that by the time we hit uh, the show proper then you know it's uh, everyone's already sort of warm and ready to laugh Your sound guy really is a piece of work he's a <laughs> wonderful producer. I wonder if you poached him from my last gig at the BBC. Um, to get it that wrong takes talent. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, he's great. He's great. No, it's really nice. I think and it's nice, I think, as well, that we have sort of members of the stage management and, and people who you wouldn't normally see who end up spilling onto the stage uh, and becoming part of it. Uh, I think that's a really fun part of the show. Of course, the irony to this show is, as you say, I have been in productions that are not meant to go wrong that do, and you do hear the odd wrong jingle in the wrong place or the odd piece of music <laughs> that comes in when it shouldn't or the lights go down or the set doesn't do this at the right time. I mean, it really does happen, this stuff. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think what we've all, I mean, you know, we were all part of kind of uh, youth theatres and, and sort of amateur groups and that kind of thing, um, uh, you know, growing up. And so I think we've definitely witnessed some of those some of those things sort of firsthand. Um, uh, Jonathan, one of the other guys who I wrote the show with, uh, has this uh, sort of horror story, which is from when we were at uh, uh, when we were at uh, drama school together uh, about he, he had a very small part in Medea uh, and he played the son who's, who's dead and was sort of dragged in uh, and uh, he had 
have all this sort of blood on him and stuff and he had linen trousers and all the blood got stuck to the uh, uh, got stuck on the dance floor matting and so he ended up being pulled on and his trousers being dragged off ah. so we've certainly had our fair share of embarrassment <laughs> definitely it's true uh, yes and then on a health and safety point of view how has this show got passed because there's an awful lot of water being spilled on the stage uh, people end up with blood all over them there's a lot again to go wrong if you slip in the wrong place how do you work out where to stand because you can't really predict that can you, you do a lot of spitting of water <laughs> it's true yes and then we have to be careful um, and uh, you know we're, we're very careful for example with the water we're very careful to make sure most of that goes to the carpet so you don't have too much on the floorboards and the wooden floor so it uh, stays sort of as, as unslippery as possible um, obviously the show is hugely risk assessed so everything that we do has a lot of sort of paperwork and stuff to go with it to make sure that it is safe um, and so uh, yeah there's a lot of, there is a lot of health and safety sort of procedure and protocol behind all the chaos so it is, it is carefully choreographed and we're talking in between performances I guess it's like a jigsaw puzzle that set that you have mm. to take it through one by one so that next time you do it everything's in the right place because there isn't a lot of gaps between jokes to have the right thing there if it isn't there it's going to struggle yeah we've got to, at the top of the show we've got to make sure that everything is 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 perfectly sort of set up and in the right place uh, and all the props are in the right place and obviously yes as you say the the set does sort of uh, deteriorate in certain stages so that all has to be very very carefully set um, uh, and if it's not yeah then totally absolutely then it can sort of uh, lead to all sorts of uh, crazy moments but yeah no so but we've got a fantastic stage management team who are very precise about all of that and, and really get it right so that's fantastic it's not a surprise to me that you got rewarded this week with the Olivier which you absolutely deserve so many of these shows come and go and they're not done as well I think the reason you won is because this is done so well I hope you know that thank you yeah I mean I think um, we've been usually humbled by that because this show has got has got sort of very sort of humble beginnings really I mean it, you know we started it in a pub theatre with 60 seats and it was just an hour long and we weren't even the main show we were sort of on a late night slot and stuff and um, so over the time I think we've really really honed the show and and we as an ensemble company sort of went back way beyond that and uh, we started off as an improv company for years sort of while we were training at drama school and stuff we did shows at the Edinburgh Festival and sort of in our weekends and stuff and so um, yeah it's taken a long time to kind of get to know each other as well as we do and I think that really helps because I think um, we really trust each other we really know each other very well and how to work with each other uh, and so hopefully that that adds to, 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 to make it a really tight show. You all seemed incredibly surprised that you got the Olivier. Was it as much of a surprise? You looked genuinely thrilled. It was, yeah, absolutely. We, we were. I mean, no, we, we, we were very surprised. We were really not expecting to win uh, at all. You know, the, uh, the other two shows in the category were absolutely fantastic. And um, obviously, we're quite sort of new kids on the block, really. So, no, it was a huge surprise. Uh, and no, we really couldn't believe it. We were absolutely thrilled. And it's amazing how it's turned into an empire. You're on the road as well with the Peter Pan that goes wrong and all these various different sort of um, sidelines of this show. It's the same theme, though, isn't it? Just playing with theatre and make, making people laugh through the media. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Peter, Peter Pan uh, goes wrong is, uh, yes, yeah, sort of sort of follows on from this, although you can see it without having seen this one. Uh, it's uh, on tour in the UK at the moment. Um, uh, but, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really fun. And uh, what you actually see as well in Peter Pan goes wrong is you see even more of the offstage relationships between the actors uh, sort of spilling onto the stage uh, than you see in, in, in this. So you, you really get a sort of, you get sort of two stories. You get the story of Peter Pan, but also the story of the actors putting on, on which I think is really fun. It's a weird business when you step outside of it and think about that, because for us who just come into this two hours of this wonderful show, it's fantastic. But of course, you've got to live with it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, is, it, is, it is pretty crazy. I mean, I think we, and especially <laughs> we've been doing the show for such a long time and, we, and and the whole point of it is that things go wrong. So we feel like in a way, yeah, it's crazy that we've been making sort of the same mistakes for <laughs> so many performances um, uh, but no but we love it and and you get a lot back from the audience as well which is fantastic and so I think that keeps it fresh all the time uh, and that makes it feel like it, it, it's sort of always different every show is different because the audience is different and they respond in a different way uh, to different moments and different things and there's a lot of audience sort of not participation but uh, there's moments where you know if the audience laugh at something that you know we play that that's really there and that's really happening and these guys really are in front of an audience so all of that keeps it changing at all and that sort of keeps us keeps us sane I think and <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And vocally, on a scale of one to ten, how tired are you now with another show ahead? Because, I mean, there's no great amplification in here. And there's a lot of screaming in the show as well for certain characters. You must be tired vocally by the end of it. 
Um, we can be. I mean, I think um, we all sort of take care to make sure our voices are all all right, uh, and we're careful to warm up and all that kind of thing. Uh, and we have a fantastic voice coach, uh, Judith, who works on the show, and she sort of uh, comes in every now and again and, and sort of looks after us. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think this space is actually quite good uh, acoustically, and, and 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 you know, so you're able to sort of, uh, as long as you're sort of grounded and stuff, you're able to sort of belt it out. Then it, yeah, it's okay. It was terrific, and I could hear every word. The audience loved it, and you deserve the huge applause at the end. This is a wonderful show. It's on here at the Duchess in the West. And, and I think it'll be here for a while. You've just extended, which is great news. So many shows, even today, announcing their closing. It's a tough time out there. Um, I think it is. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I mean, I think we're, we're really, really sort of moved. I think because um, this show came in. You know, we, we we sort of originally thought probably we were just do a few weeks in the West End, sort of to finish off our tour, and um, we were sort of totally, you know, thrilled that that NIMAX thought it could be a long runner and to extend once was fantastic. To extend again is brilliant, and we're hopefully looking at taking the show over to America as well. So there's lots of opportunities sort of on the horizon as well so it's very exciting but uh, don't want to get too technical but we need a reprint by the way of the program it's the Olivier award winning the play that goes wrong we need a reprint on this yeah absolutely we must we must get it we must get that it's done worth yeah. the investment I think Henry Lewis great to talk to you thank you so much thank and you. good luck with this show thank you very much